what we have here is an absolutely crap attempt to make up a dummy battery. Just some cardboard and tape and um, I certainly don't think I'll be getting a Blue Peter badge uh, for this piece of junk but it's kind of good enough for me to size up uh, the batteries where I'm going to be putting them. I'm just going to try and uh, just going to try and film some of this here now. So what I'm hoping for is to fit in four batteries here uh, in front of the motor. Um, see if I can get a better view on this. Uh, we should be able to get four batteries in here. I'm going to have to take out some of these stupid brackets. That's actually part of the old um, radiator. Uh, set up there so we can uh, chop that out and hopefully maybe even take a little bit of that uh, framework out but I'd have to be careful with that but uh, well we can certainly get that battery in that away and as I say unfortunately the power steering tank here will have to shift inwards about a foot or so just to just to clear the battery rack here and uh, so, it does make a pretty good fit, having said all that, we can get four of them in there. I'm going to go under the car now and uh, we'll see what, if any, batteries that we can fit in where I took out the fuel tank. So, that'll be the plan. Under the back of the car and uh, this area here that we can see it's just under the boot and uh, it was taken up by the back silencer box you can see the exhaust cut out there and as such it's got this uh, this kind of silly heat shield here that we can take out uh, but there's plenty of space here and uh, I've just had a quick scan under the car to see uh, the best uh, the best areas to put some of the batteries uh, the plan is to have four of them up 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 front and uh, another four somewhere underneath the back of the car. Uh, so I'm just going to take our dummy battery here and I'm going to try and do a quick uh, demo here. This is our dummy battery. I just hold it up with my knee there. And as we can see there's plenty of space in that uh, silencer box area there to put on of our back batteries. Uh, this space here is taken up, uh, this is where the spare wheel is, is, uh, is generally installed or kept I should, I should say. So what I don't really want to do with this car is to have to cut out any of the frame or chassis uh, purely because of all the um, implications that that would potentially have for to get the car to pass its NCT test. Um, so I want to try to keep that as uh, as stock as I can. So I'll come down under the uh, diff here now. And this is the space under the back seat uh, where the petrol tank was installed and if you're doing uh, a BMW uh, conver conversion uh, taking out the fuel tank is certainly the hardest part uh, well it was certainly for me anyway the hardest part of this uh, of, of, of the stripping down the uh, petrol parts um, purely because of the fact these bolts uh, sheared off and I had to cut the straps and cut all of the hoses and pipes and all of that horrible stuff that was down here and um, in this part here as well the Haynes um, book that I had for this car was, was I suppose extremely unhelpful uh, they stated there that these big um, subframe bolts had to be undone 
and the subframe and the diff and all of these other big heavy parts had to be dropped out by about a foot or so uh, to get the fuel tank out um, which I thought was a bit of a, a was a, a certainly a, a bit uh, silly um, so shall we say I tried an alternative approach um, with some gentle force and uh, seemed to have successfully gotten the tank out without having to drop the subframe which uh, would be a complete you know tough job to do because it's it's got all of the rear hunting gear attached to it so I would be essentially taking out all of the back drivetrain and sus suspension parts and all of this so I suppose I could afford to do it this way because the fuel tank didn't have to go back into the car. So anyway, enough about that. My theories on BMWs and all that. So let's try one of our dummy batteries in this area here. And uh, as we can see, if I can manage to pull back a little bit here, I'll try and just get my knee under it and uh, pull back a bit here so you can see a little bit better. But that battery there will fit happily in that part of the uh, petrol tank space here. Um, so that's two batteries taken care of. And the, the other side here, try and maneuver myself over, over, over this way. And uh, this battery will fit in here. Uh, so we can get two batteries in where I took out the petrol tank and one battery uh, in there where the, what, what did I call it, um, silencer box came out. So yeah, uh, that'll be three of the rear batteries that don't have to be in the passenger compartment. Um, so that's good news for all. And uh, it means that I'll only have to put one battery into the boot space. Uh, so that's good from uh, from a purely um, perspective of keeping the passenger space and storage space of the car um, as normal as possible. Um, so just a quick tour, might as well, as we're on the way out. Uh, we got the drive shaft here, and we have the drive shaft centre bearing, and we have the a uh, donut kind of a uh, joint that goes on to the back of the gearbox here which is which was very tough to get that guy off because the bolts had been torqued by someone a hell of a lot stronger than I am and uh, this is our gearbox and adapter plate on there this is from the under view here so you can probably see it a little bit bit better uh, we've gone for the clutchless option so we don't have a clutch slave cylinder installed anymore and the two parts of the plate uh, bolt up with these M16 bolts here. You can probably see what I was trying to show earlier there with that bracket that I had to do the way the, st the, way the steering arm... Oops, we've lost our camcorder battery, hold on. Oh, come on, there we go. Camcorder battery is back in action. Okay, so, as I was saying, probably see that a little bit better there now, perhaps the way the steering steering column comes out and down to the rack just caused me some problems there with that with that guy but it's, it's no huge deal and uh, I'll go underneath the coupler here now you can see this is the center of our two plates and you can see the forklift uh, shaft there see the shaft coming out going into the coupler and that goes on into the into the gearbox Underneath here are some of our power steering hoses and we're on the way out. So that's about it for today folks.